Hey guys, Scott here, and today we are going to talk about an easy way to control a pneumatic cylinder. Now there's a couple of terms we want to talk about when we look at a pneumatic cylinder. Let's talk about those first. The two most common things you're going to hear are stroke and bore. We'll start with stroke. Stroke is the distance that the cylinder rod extends when air is applied. So you can see here that this cylinder has a stroke of three inches. That means that when air is applied, this rod is going to extend three inches. The longer the stroke, the longer this will extend and the longer the overall body of the cylinder will be. Bore is an indication of the diameter of the cylinder, how thick it is. The larger the bore, the more air the cylinder can hold and the stronger and faster it will be. The most common type of cylinder you're going to encounter is called a double acting cylinder and that's what this is here. You can see there are two air ports on this cylinder. One is for air to come in and push the cylinder rod out. When air comes into the other port, it's going to pull the cylinder back in. So double acting, meaning that it uses the power of air both to extend and retract the cylinder. This is also a universal mount cylinder. That means that it has mounting threads both at the tail and the head of the cylinder. There are many different varieties of cylinders, but this one is the most common and it's what we're going to be using for our demonstration today. Now to control this cylinder, we need some way to tell the air flowing to the cylinder which of these two ports to go to. And to do that, we're going to be using this four-way, five-port solenoid valve. What a solenoid is, it's essentially a pneumatic switch which controls the flow of air. Air is going to come into the port marked P here from our compressor, and depending on the position of the solenoid, it's either going to flow through port A or port B. By controlling which of the two ports the air is flowing to, we can decide if the cylinder is extended or retracted. This is called a five port solenoid because it also has two exhaust ports on the left hand side, which means that you can meter or control the speed of the exhaust for each of the two air outputs. So the first thing we're going to do is install a fittings in our solenoid. Now solenoids come in a variety of sizes. This one is an eighth inch NPT solenoid. That means that these uh, female threaded holes are one eighth inch NPT. We have several fittings, the correct size to match. You'll see that these th uh, fittings are threaded on one end and the other end has a uh, plastic ring to accept a quarter inch outer diameter airline. For this solenoid, we're going to need three fittings, one for each of the two air outputs and one for the air input. We're just gonna go ahead and tighten one in by hand first and then come in with an adjustable wrench and make sure that it is nice and snug. We don't want any air leaking out. So we wanna make sure that it's nice and tight. You can see here that these fittings already have some Teflon applied. That's that white you see around the threads. If you find that after you tighten your fittings in, there's still air leaking, you may want to apply some additional Teflon tape, which you can get to the fitting and then reinsert it into the solenoid and tighten it back down. All right, so those fittings are installed. That's how we're going to get air into and out of the solenoid. Now we need to be able to get air into the cylinder. For that, we have these elbow fittings. These fittings are similar to the ones we just used. They have a threaded end here. They turn at 90 degrees and then they have the plastic uh, ring for inserting your airline quarter inch again. So we have quarter inch airline here, quarter inch airline here. And these fittings are just going to install into the two airports on our cylinder. All right, now we have our elbows installed into our cylinder. We have our fittings installed into our solenoid. The last thing that we need to do for our solenoid is install some uh, mufflers into the exhaust ports. For the exhaust ports of the solenoid, we have these two breather vents. You can see that these fittings are threaded on one side and they have a muffler on the other. The primary purpose of these is to block debris from entering into the exhaust ports of the cylinder, but they also help uh, to slightly muffle the sound of the exhaust. So we'll just go ahead and install these into the two ports marked EA and EB on the solenoid. All right, and that is our solenoid with all the fittings installed, ready to go. The next step is going to be to connect our solenoid to our cylinder using our airline. For this, we're going to be using some quarter inch polyethylene airline. This is the most common type of airline used in this sort of application. We have a cutter here to make sure that we get a nice square cut on the airline. And we're just gonna go ahead and look at the approximate distance that we wanna go and we're gonna cut the airline. And then I'm going to make a matching cut of a second piece. So we have these two pieces like that. We're gonna take one of the pieces 
insert it into the first of the two fittings. You just press it in firmly until you feel it slightly depress into the fitting. You should be able to tug on it and not be able to pull it out. And port A we're going to be putting into the top port of our cylinder. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and take the second piece of airline, plug that into the fitting that's coming out of port B, and plug that into the bottom port of our cylinder. All right, now you can see that the solenoid has the air lines connected to the top and the bottom of the cylinder. Our next step is going to be getting air to the solenoid. To do that, we're going to be using a very important but commonly overlooked uh, pneumatic fitting. This is called a quick connect with push-on. Now on your air compressor, you're going to see a uh, barrel connector similar to this. This fitting is meant to insert into that barrel connector to adapt it to quarter inch airline. So we're going to take another piece of our quarter inch airline, press it here into this fitting. We're going to attach that to the input of the solenoid. Now the last thing we want to do before we connect air to our solenoid is check our air pressure. Your compressor may have a regulator like this one. If it doesn't, we usually include one in our kits. To install it, you simply make sure that you have air line coming from your compressor into the regulator and then out to your pneumatics. Turning the dial at the top of the regulator will adjust the air pressure. Somewhere around 40 to 50 psi will be fine for most pneumatics. General rule of thumb is to use as little pressure as possible to achieve your desired effect. All right, with our pressure set, we can go ahead and hook our air up to our solenoid. We can now test our solenoid to make sure it's operating properly. You can see that there's a small silver button here on the edge of the solenoid. We can go ahead and depress that and it will actuate our cylinder. All right, that's working fine. The next step is to control this setup. As I said before, the solenoid is essentially an electric switch, so we need something that can tell this when to turn off and on. For that, we're going to be using a Peekaboo One controller. This is a simple controller. It has a single output that's solid state, meaning that whatever voltage we send in between 9 and 24 volt DC, it will send out of this output in the uh, sequence that we program with the controller. We're using a 12 volt solenoid, so we're going to use a 12 volt power supply with this. We'll insert the power supply, we'll wire our solenoid up to the controller, and we'll give it a quick program. To wire the solenoid to the controller, we're just going to take the red and black wires and put them into the negative and positive terminals on the output. Red will go to positive, black will go to negative. All right, we're going to plug in our 12 volt power supply, hook it up to the controller. Controller will power on and we can now program a sequence of movements for our cylinder. With this controller, all programming is done on the controller. You're just going to hit record, tap out a sequence, and hit record again to save. Let's do that now. Now the controller has stored that sequence. If we tap the play button, it will play it back. All right, and it's just that easy. We've now programmed a solenoid and a cylinder with a simple controller. If we want to adjust our sequence, we just tap record and act it out again. As long as we hold down the button, the cylinder will stay extended. When we let it go, it will retract. Hit record again to save. You can tap play again to play it back. You can also attach a trigger to this controller to set off your sequence. So you can have a motion sensor or a step mat or any other type of trigger that would activate that sequence of movements. All right, so that is a real quick overview of our simple cylinder starter kit. It's a kit that gets you going with pneumatics, a very easy kind of entry point level kit that anybody can get started with and start exploring the uh, cool possibilities with pneumatics.